10 generations of iPhone, and it all culminates to this one, the iPhone 10. What's going on, everyone? Marco here, and yes, I'm back, but that's not important. What's important is my experience living with the iPhone 10. so let's jump right into it. The iPhone 10 almost feels unreal. Early reports of its design almost seemed on Apple. How could they have this weird notch? But as 2017 kept steaming ahead and more and more phones pushed the boundaries of screen to body ratios and the essential phone which came out with a notch, albeit a tiny one, but a notch nonetheless. So now we are left with an iPhone that's main purpose is to define smartphones for the next decade. Now, Apple has embraced the iPhone's design and 100% of that notch. It's housing new sensors for one, and it's being implemented as a design UI element to store useful information. But at the moment, the notch is in a pretty poor state of utilization. You see the notch right now is being used for a couple of things. On the right-hand side, you can pull down your control center, but anywhere else is notification center. And that is all the two functionalities that the notch right now gives you. And then inside the UI in terms of functionality, it really gives you a couple of, I don't know how functional these are, but they're nice things to have, but I just don't want them right there all the time. You have your time, which is kind of important. You have your GPS indicator, and then on the right hand of the notch, you have your signal status, which honestly, I mean, I really don't want that. Your Wi-Fi status, if you're connected or LTE, depending on what you're doing, and then your battery bar without a percentage. If you want to get your battery percentage, you have to swipe down on your control center. That is all you have, and that doesn't really change inside the applications either. Applications that actually utilize the notch basically put the same information and doesn't display any content. The only way you can use the full display and see everything on this panel from edge to edge is in photos or when you're watching a video. So far it doesn't use it. Any application that I have used so far that does utilize the full display of the iPhone 10 puts that useless information in the notch and nothing else. It's really stupid. I really want to use like for example, full screen Safari, I want my content to fill the entire display and not have this pesky information right here all the time. Just my two cents. Now you might be wondering why would I even want to have a full screen experience? Well, this display is so dang good. It's Apple's third OLED display in a product, but it's its first OLED display in something running iOS. What are the first two you ask? Well, Apple Watch and Touch Bar. It's high in pixel density, surpassing the 326 standard norm of Retina to a 458 PPI with this new Super Retina HD display. It's insanely bright too at 625 nits, but it's not poppy or deeply saturated like Samsung counterparts. Even though this panel is sourced and built by Samsung, Apple though would like to remind you they did all the engineering and calibration in-house. And in honestly, shows. The only downside of this display is the absence of ProMotion. If you've never used a display for 120 hertz refresh rate, don't because it will ruin all other displays for you. Also, with a technology like OLED, there's always a risk of burn-in, and yes, even the iPhone 10 has that infamous blue color shift at off axes. It's just the technology and we'll have to learn to deal with it. And before you comment, Marco, OLEDs are notorious for low refresh rates. Well, yes, I do know that, OLED panels do normally top out at 60 hertz. That's why you don't see OLED gaming panels. But it doesn't mean Apple shouldn't pursue it. Throw enough money in engineering at a problem, and nine times out of ten, it will get solved. Not that the iPhone 10 needed to cost anymore, but just because it would be a very cool feat to have an OLED panel with 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, speaking of price, the iPhone 10 starts at $999. And unless you live in a state with no sales tax, that is a $1,000 plus device. Is that even justifiable? Well, yeah, actually, think about it. You use your phone hundreds of times a day, and in terms of usage, it is the most used device you probably own. More than your computer and tablet and TV probably combined. But Apple doesn't skimp on the specs when it comes to your money. It's packed with the A11 Bionic chip with a neural engine, which is marketing talk for a really fast six core processor with some killer graphics performance. The iPhone 10 seems like it could outperform an iPad Pro just announced a mere six months ago. It could probably outperform some MacBooks as well, but I don't wanna dive into the specs of the iPhone. I strictly wanna talk about my experience. So when it comes to performance, this has been the slickest iPhone to date. 
Seriously, I'm even including Face ID in that. If you say iPhone 10, the two most talked about flaws is the lack of a fingerprint reader and home button and that notch. Let's go ahead and talk about the first one here, the lack of a home button, and most importantly, a fingerprint reader like Touch ID 2.0. Is Face ID something that will be huge? Maybe, probably, for the next at least a few years, I think Apple is going to stick with their guns and go Face ID only on hopefully all of their product line. In terms of my experience of Face ID, it's really worked about 99.9% .9 of the time. I've only had a couple times where it didn't work and maybe because it had an off angle of my face. But in terms of sunglasses, it works well with polarized, non-polarized, all types of sunglasses. It works in day, at night. Um, and yeah, you do need to have your eyes open so you can't just go up to somebody when they're sleeping and put their phone up and uh, get into their film. Now in terms of speed and access, I have had a couple friends tell me that, okay, yeah, I, I kind of do want to see my phone even when I'm in a meeting or something, I want to pull my phone out and see what I have a notification. And I totally get that you can't go incognito in terms of the meeting. You can't just like look at your phone uh, and, and be discreet about it. But in terms of normal everyday life, I've never really had an issue with the speed of unlocking my phone. By the time I take my phone out of my pocket and look at it, it's already unlocked about five out of five times only a couple times it doesn't really get it uh, and sometimes it takes me to swipe up and then it will read my face maybe there's just a couple little bugs in iOS uh, but again right now it's already unlocked I can go ahead and swipe open and most of the time in the process of swiping open your phone it's going to unlock right then and there so again speed not really a huge issue in my book but this provides us to the perfect segue into the lack of a home button on the iphone 10 and the glorious gestures yes it was weird for about half a day but it quickly became second nature swipe up to go home swipe up and hold for multitasking or if you want a quicker method swipe up and to the right in one subtle motion and you go right into multitasking the placement of control center annoys me it honestly should be in the bottom right corner or bottom left for left-handed folks please move it and allow software customization okay Thanks, Apple. The only thing that gets me is the new screenshot and power off commands. To take a screenshot is power and volume up button. To shut off your phone, you hold the power in either of the volume buttons. Siri is a longer press of the power button. But here's the annoying thing. I have taken so many accidental screenshots, mainly when I wake up funny enough. I have tons of screenshots of my alarms going off in the morning. So other than those quirks, the iPhone 10 has been a joy to live with. The camera is amazing. Photos are vibrant and so full of detail. 4K at 60 frames per second is amazing too. And having that HDR and P3 wide color gamut built into the iPhone just brings out new life to your photos. Portrait mode is great. Portrait lighting is crap. Honestly, the iPhone 10 is hands down the best mobile camera I've ever used, but I've never used the Pixel 2, so take that with a grain of salt. Battery life. Well, if you really want a lot of battery life, this is not the phone for you to buy. You need to go buy the iPhone 8 Plus or the 7 Plus, whichever Plus model you want. That phone has the best battery life of any iPhone. This kind of sits a little closer to the iPhone 8 than the iPhone 8 Plus in terms of battery life. I get about five hours of usage of screen on time, whatever you want to call it. And uh, for me, that's pretty good. I get through my entire workday and get to go home. Uh, sometimes, you know, I charge this in the car. I charge it when I get back home. I have wireless charging pads. So, you know, I just drop it on there and it charges really slowly, but it does charge. I don't have to worry about the battery life. But again, if you're looking for the most extreme battery life, you need to go over to the iPhone 8 Plus. But if you want the most cutting edge from Apple, then, I mean, honestly, this is the only phone that is in their lineup that will fit that bill. It's a very, very advanced phone in terms of style and courage, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you want the best of the best from the big Apple, then the iPhone 10 is definitely the phone for you. And you probably aren't watching this video for buying advice because this phone is most likely already in your pockets. But for me personally, I think the iPhone 10 is the best iPhone, not only from a quality standpoint, but just from an overall packaging standpoint. It's a futuristic phone with a bold statement. Yes, the notch is a little annoying sometimes, but honestly for me, it is kind of a hallmark thing now. Like this will be the hallmark of all iPhones for probably the next 10 years. Uh, so you're going to have to get to uh, get along with this notch for at least nine more years after iPhone 10. And for all of you that are on the fence of buying iPhone 10 compared to iPhone 8, uh, Bo is currently working on the full review of the iPhone 10. So make sure to stay tuned here on the Phone Dog YouTube channel. 
Glad to be back. I hope you guys are too. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will see you all in the next video. So go ahead and say it. And as always, my name is Marco Hanna, and I'll catch you in my next video.